On the 26th of November 2011, NASA launched a car-sized rover named Curiosity and began a historic voyage to Mars. After an eight-month journey, Curiosity rover arrived and successfully landed on Mars. Within a year, Curiosity measured an unexpected discovery that methane was found in the air. Here on Earth, methane in the atmosphere is biological in origin, with much of it stemming from cows, goats, and yak burps. Other sources include termites, rice paddies, swamps, natural gas leakage, and photosynthetic plants. This discovery led to some arguments where some say there are living organisms on Mars that are yet to be discovered. And some even say that us, humans, originate from Mars. In 1984, experts found a meteorite in Antarctica known as ALH 84001 that contained fossilized bacteria-like formations that came from Mars. There is no evidence how it actually got here, but some believe Mars was once a blue planet just like Earth, and that led to the idea that colonizing Mars is possible. In 2006, the real-life Iron Man, Elon Musk, had an ambitious plan that he wanted to build a city on Mars. Yes, you are right, planet Mars, to transform humanity into a multi-planetary species. Another reason, also the most important reason, is to avoid the extinction of humanity from future comet strikes. There is a controversy regarding if the planet was the real reason for the mass extinction that happened 65 million years ago. But we can surely understand the devastating effect a large comet will have on Earth if it does happen. Some say if it happened before, it will happen again. There is no guarantee that Earth and humanity will never experience another orbital comet strike. Or, before a comet even hits our planet, we might just destroy ourselves. A possible World War III triggered by some deranged dictator, making the Earth's surface uninhabitable for a very long time. In Roman mythology, Mars was the god of war and destabilization. It is the fourth planet from the sun. It is often called the red planet due to the red-orange appearance which is caused by iron oxide or rust prevalent on its surface. Mars's gravity is one-third of that of Earth. The main composition of the atmosphere is carbon dioxide. The atmospheric pressure is very low, which is less than 1% of the atmospheric pressure on Earth. There is almost no oxygen, so humans cannot breathe on Mars, but plants can in a controlled environment. Because of its thin atmosphere, its surface is not protected from the ultraviolet radiation emitted by the sun. The temperature difference between day and night is also very large. A summer day on Mars may reach 20 degrees Celsius near the equator, but at night, the temperature can plummet to about minus 73 degrees Celsius. The solar day on Mars is only slightly longer than an Earth day, 24 hours and 39 minutes. Thus, human circadian rhythm can be adapted to on Mars. It has an axial tilt relative to its orbital plane, 
which is similar to the axial tilt of Earth. So Mars has seasons just like those found on Earth. Though on Mars, they are nearly twice as long because its orbital period is that much longer. A year on Mars is nearly two Earth years. So generally speaking, Mars is not suitable for human habitation as a whole. But with our current technology, we can overcome these problems. Infrastructures that block ultraviolet rays, confined and pressured air conditioning systems, and growing plants in controlled environments. We can build these dedicated facilities to live and sustain ourselves, while at the same time minimizing risks. So it is quite safe to say that living on Mars is possible. The reason that Mars is the prime target planet to colonize is because it is a rocky planet. In our solar system, four inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are composed mostly of rocky material like silicate, iron, or nickel, which allow us to live on it. Mercury has no atmosphere and is too close to the sun, while the surface temperature on Venus is 475 degrees Celsius, and its atmospheric pressure is 95 times that of Earth. Jupiter and Saturn, on the other hand, are composed mainly of gases, so they are also uninhabitable. A second reason is, Mars is close enough to reach with our current technology. The journey will take about six months from Earth. A third reason is that, thanks to the Curiosity rover, water was found on Mars. Not only could water sustain lives on Mars and plantations to grow food, it is also one of the main sources to generate fuel for rockets that would make return trips back to Earth. SpaceX Starship rockets use liquid methane and liquid oxygen methalox, as the propellant, and these can be produced with the unlimited supply of carbon dioxide and water on the Red Planet if the required facilities are built. To go to Mars, the core problem to be solved is transportation. At our current technology, only rockets can reach Mars. But to return from Mars, the traditional one-time usage of a rocket will not work. It has to be able to land and relaunch. This is where SpaceX founder Elon Musk comes to play. They are testing a rocket called Starship, which is able to transport people and cargo to Mars and back to Earth multiple times without refurbishing except for replacing the heat shields. Before departing to Mars, we will need a packing list, and this includes surface transportation, life support devices, seats, and construction machinery to build houses. To do so, this requires automatic robots that can utilize the material native to Mars to build houses because they would be too heavy to carry them from Earth. Back in 2015, NASA organized the 3D Printed Habitat Challenge, which involved building a 3D printed habitat for deep space exploration, including the agency's journey to the Moon, Mars, and beyond that. Throughout the competition, more than 60 teams have participated. AI Space Factory was awarded first place in the challenge, with their winning design Marsha. Marsha can be built automatically with its robot. It is a bright, multi-level, corridor-free home that stands upright on the surface of Mars and suits Martian conditions. The structure is optimized to handle internal atmospheric pressure and thermal stresses. Other than that, it could also be used as a farm to grow crops and food. 
Researchers have confirmed that the use of Martian soil to grow food in a controlled environment is possible. A total of 840 pots with 4,200 seeds planted in simulated Mars soil supplied by NASA all sprouted. But because it can only be done in a controlled environment, the production will be low. And to colonize Mars, there will be thousands, perhaps millions, of people living on Mars. And planting food in a controlled environment would not be viable. Animals would not be able to survive as well. Scientists think that the only way for mass production is to terraform Mars. To terraform Mars, the key is to warm up the planet, melting the ice from the North and South Poles, releasing massive amounts of carbon dioxide from the ground, creating a thicker atmosphere that forms a greenhouse effect to keep the surface temperature warm. This would heat up the planet enough to keep water in a liquid state, creating rivers, seas, oceans, water vapor, and thickening the atmosphere to increase its atmospheric pressure to block the harmful ultraviolet particles coming from the sun. And after the planet is warm enough, plants would be able to survive and grow on a large scale all over the surface of Mars, creating breathable oxygen for humans and animals. To achieve this, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk hope to use thermonuclear explosions at the Mars North and South Poles to jumpstart the creation of Martian atmosphere. In July 2018, a professor at the University of Colorado, Dr. Bruce Jakowski, poured cold water on Elon Musk's plan to terraform Mars by concluding there is not enough of those gases trapped on Mars to get the job done. Carbon dioxide and water vapor are the only greenhouse gases that are likely to be present on Mars in sufficient abundance to provide any significant greenhouse warming. And the release of carbon dioxide would only release enough to bring the atmospheric pressure from the current 0.6% to 1.2% of that found on Earth. NASA, on the other hand, is not sure of Elon's plan of nuking Mars. They believe that terraforming Mars is impossible with present-day technology. Almost immediately, Elon Musk replied, There's a massive amount of CO2 on Mars absorbed into soil that we released upon heating. With enough energy via artificial or natural fusion, you can terraform almost any large rocky body. A year later, Elon Musk tweeted again on his Twitter account with two words, Nuke Mars. In the following week, Elon pushed the new idea to make the Mars atmosphere more hospitable to humans. It makes more sense to place thousands of satellites to reflect the sun's ray, rather than nuking the poles of the planet. Musk has been posting the Nuke Mars idea for the last few years. In fact, he very recently showcased Nuke Mars t-shirts on Twitter. But currently, it looks like he may have had a change of heart. It might make sense to have thousands of solar reflector satellites to warm Mars versus artificial suns. Musk tweeted on the 20th of August 2019. By artificial suns, he's referring to his nuke Mars theory, which he explained in a subsequent tweet. Nuke Mars refers to a continuous stream of very low fallout nuclear fusion explosions above the atmosphere to create artificial suns. Much like our sun, this will not cause Mars to become radioactive, Musk wrote. It seems complicated, but considering future population growth, demand for resources, and an alternate solution to the doomsday argument, Humanity may be required to colonize another planet in this modern world. One of the reasons why the related agencies think that terraforming Mars is possible is because Earth was also terraformed from a non-habitable planet to a blue planet, and this made life possible on Earth. 
Some say moss inherently has the foundations for life to erupt there naturally. Some even say that we humans have originated from moss at some point in the past. Stephen Albert Banner, a professor in both chemistry and cell and molecular biology, said that some conditions are necessary to support an RNA world model in which self-replicating RNA is a precursor to life on Earth. RNA is a copy or a transcription of DNA. Dr. Banner has identified calcium, borate, and molybdenum as important to the successful formation of carbohydrates and the stabilization of RNA. He suggested that Mars may have had more desirable conditions than Earth for the initial production of RNA. So there is a good chance, a probability that there is life existing on Mars. And we can also speculate that there may have been life or civilizations existing on Mars in the past. In 2014, plasma physicist Dr. John Brandenburg presented his theory that an ancient civilization on Mars was wiped out by a nuclear attack and the evidence of the genocide can still be seen today. The Martian surface is covered with a thin layer of radioactive substances including uranium, thorium and radioactive potassium and this pattern radiates from a hotspot on Mars. He's adamant that they are the remnant of two nuclear explosions on its surface and the evidence of the explosions exists near two sites that apparently had life in the past including Sidonia, the location of the famous Face on Mars. Some say the Earth was terraformed before like what was written in the Genesis, that the Creator fabricated the land, seas, plants and trees on the land that bears fruit, living creatures that dwell in the water and birds that fly across the sky wild animals and lastly, humans and his own image. The entire process resembles similarities to what we are trying to do, terraformation of a planet, Mars. Maybe the falling Martian civilization sent us to Earth to escape the catastrophe so that we, humans, can continue to exist and live on their behalf as their memento a civilization to prosper in reminder of their race. Will we share the same fate? Will we be able to prosper as an interplanetary race? Will we be able to colonize Mars once again and celebrate our homecoming? Only time will tell in the very near future.